The Lord is good. The devil is the opposite of the Lord. The devil wants to be in power and take the Lord's place. The Lord creates and the devil destroys. From the beginning of time, the Lord has done his goodness and the devil has tried to stop it. It is a picture of Jesus Christ and Antichrist. The Lord and his goodness are in his children and the devil and his evil are in his children, played out through time in the Old and the New Testaments. At this time, would you help me welcome Brother Kyle to the podium? Good morning. Praise the Lord. All right, you can just want to say something, but as we're doing that, you can turn to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to be in a lot of scripture this morning. Revelation and Isaiah and Ezekiel. And they can be a little bit hard to maybe interpret or understand, but they shouldn't be. Um, so as we're reading them, I want you to kind of keep this thought in mind that the Bible um, can get very deep in its theology, but also it can be very general in its understanding. And we must always keep in mind that there's the Lord, there's His church, okay? There's His children. You got that over here? And then you have the enemy, the devil, and his workers and the people he uses, okay? And as we read this morning, kind of be thinking about that. You got them two camps. And um, it's going to kind of display how the Lord works and how the enemy works. The, the title today is At War with the Devil. At War with the Devil. Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 17. Very descriptive passage. Uh, John is seeing something here the Lord's showing him. And this is what he's seeing. Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 17. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand and two hundred and threescore days. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them, Woe to the inhabitor, inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. 
And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman, two, two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time for the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Quite a descriptive passage there. And we can see from this uh, descriptive passage that the devil has been kicked out of heaven and is at war with the remnant of the woman's seed. The woman is a picture of Israel or the church, and we are the remnant if we are born again. So if you are a Christian, the devil is at war against you. So then in turn, you are at war against him. You can try to tell yourself that there is no devil and that you are at war with nobody. But I would not suggest that. Because he has Christians in his aim and he is coming full force. And if you want to try to avoid him by putting your head in the sand and pretending like he's not there, then you're going to get punched right in the face. And I say that because usually you think of boxing, you got two people coming in, right? And they're going to go at each other. And I was thinking in particular of Mike Tyson. And I want to say if Mike's going to be watching this, I'm not making fun of Mike. Because <laughs> if you know Mike Tyson, he was very vicious, okay? But when you come to the center of the ring with Mike, if you know anything about him, he had a real high voice, like a lady. And maybe he would say to you, I'm going to beat you up. You might put your guard down, right? But I guarantee you, when he come out of that ring, out of that corner, he would knock you out. So don't think that the enemy is not going to do anything. The devil has been trying to work against the Lord and his children since he fell after he was created. We can see in this passage alone that the dragon or the devil drew the third part of the stars and took them to the earth with himself. He then tried to stop the woman from delivering the child, which is Jesus Christ, and failed, and then he was kicked out of heaven after war with Michael and his angels. The devil, which was able to go between heaven and earth, was no more allowed back to heaven to be the accuser of the brethren, but has come down to the earth in great wrath to make war against the Lord's children, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now that uh, the season has changed here, kind of heading towards fall, uh, in our household, got four boys, a lot of times if you hear us talking, we'll be talking about the word of the Lord and what's going on in the world, and we hash it all out. But also in that talk is football. And with football, part of winning the game is knowing what you need to do, practicing or preparing for it with the tools or players you have, and knowing the habits and the tendencies of the other team. Um, sometimes they, people get uh, videos of the other team to watch. Sometimes you can do it uh, even at the game. I think I was at a game one time. I think my sister was with me. I think we were on the sidelines. I could be mistaken. I think it was her. But And I was watching the teams. We was playing Oakland. And I watched a series. And that quickly you can kind of figure out some things. Next half come, and they were lining up, and I hollered out there, they're going to do a draw. You remember that? And what happened? Nobody was ready, and they did a draw. Because when I was watching prior to it, I noticed the habits and the system they were using when they were doing certain things. So when they lined up, I could tell what was going to take place. In the same sense, we need to know 
how the enemy is going to work against us and what he is like. We won't give him any accolades this morning, but we can study what he is like. He is not omnipotent. That means he is not all-powerful. All and he is not omnipresent. That means he is not present everywhere at the same time. Them attributes only belong to God. But he was a powerful angel at one time and has a third part of the fallen stars or angels with him. The word devil means Satan, which means slanderer. And as we read in the opening passage, he is the accuser of the brethren. Now, th then, do you think he is going to use those attributes against us? Of course he will. He was in heaven doing the accusing before the cross. It says this in Zechariah chapter 3, 1 through 4. Zechariah 3, 1 through 4. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. But the devil was, of course, kicked out of heaven because he cannot stand in front of the Lord and accuse us to him because the payment for sin has been made. Jesus Christ, our Savior, has paid the price. Now that he is down on earth, who is he going to make accusations to? Not God. He's going to make them to you and to me. The devil is also known as Lucifer in one passage, which means to shine with light. We get our American word luminescent, okay? It says this in Isaiah chapter 14, 1 through 17. Now remember the big picture, good and evil. Isaiah chapter 14, 1 through 17. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land and the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives and whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath and with a continual stroke he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees rejoiceth thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Hell from beneath is, is moved from thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under, under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt thy throne above the stars of God. 
I will also sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the worlds as wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of his prisoners. In this passage, I want you to remember, you can see, he's talking about Jacob, he's talking about Israel, he's talking about his church. You got that on one side. Then he's talking about the king of Babylon and the devil on the other side. He's talking about Babylon overtaking Israel. Really, it's the spirit of the Antichrist working in that king to come against the Lord's children. The Lord is good. The devil is the opposite of the Lord. The devil wants to be in power and take the Lord's place. The Lord creates and the devil destroys. From the beginning of time, the Lord has done his goodness and the devil has tried to stop it. It is a picture of Jesus Christ and Antichrist. The Lord and his goodness are in his children and the devil and his evil are in his children, played out through time in the Old and the New Testaments. In Ezekiel, the Bible tells us of the Lord's judgment upon the prince of Tyrus. Okay? The prince of Tyrus, you'll see here, was in the Old Testament. And it will go on, we'll read it, but it goes on to say about the prince of Tyrus being in the Garden of Eden. Now, do you think the actual prince of Tyrus, the human being, the man, was actually in the Garden of Eden? No, he was not. But the entity that works within him was. Okay? The spirit of the devil or the Antichrist was there, and the Lord tells us about him while talking about the prince of Tyrus. So just remember that. Ezekiel chapter 28, 1 through 19. It's talking about a human being, about Tyrus, but at the same time, he's talking about the enemy. Ezekiel 28, 1 through 19. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am, God, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, Therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, okay, now here's where we start. He's talking about a man, but he's talking about a spirit too within this man. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, 
and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the oinx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of the tabrets and of the pipes was prepared in thee, in that the day thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. In this passage, we can see that the devil was formed by the Lord and the stones were his covering. He was very beautiful. And music was formed in him. It says he was perfect in his ways when, it was, when he was created until iniquity was found in him. It says that his heart was lifted up because of his beauty. Pride was found in him. Remember in Isaiah, he said he would be like the Most High? The devil wants to take what is only the Lord's and take it for himself. And that is what he wants everyone else to do, is to believe in their autonomy. Autonomy is a big word for self-governance. To, to be in control of yourself and the king of your own life. The enemy wants you to trust in your own self, in your own ways, your own thoughts and ideas. He wants you to rule, not the Lord. This passage might make a little more sense too in 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. Remember, the enemy wants to set himself and you above the Lord. He wants you to be king. Second Thessalonians 2, 1 through 4. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a fallen away first, and that that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, and that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Let me ask you a question this morning. Do you think there's a great falling away in this, in this world? Yes, of course. And man is his own temple. And his sin is being revealed because he has taken the place of God and saying his own sinful ideas are right. And the word of God is wrong, even calling good evil. You know, this didn't start out uh, in the New Testament. Um, it's been going on 
as we know since the beginning of time. We don't have a time frame for the devil necessarily. We just know he was created and he was beautiful and he was kicked out of heaven. But this battle has been going on back and forth and it starts in Genesis. Okay, if you recall, um, um, I want to say something first about Genesis. I want to use this word. Um, I think some men laughed at me in, in men's theology once. I used the word parenthetical enlargement. Okay? Um, it's a big word, but it's important. Okay? Because here's what it means. If um, if I tell a story, I could, I could say it's short like, okay, Mike French... Um, went home, okay? I could just tell that story. But then what I could do is I could use parenthetical enlargement. I can break that story down even more for your understanding, okay? I could say, Mike French went home, and then down below I could say, but when he went home, he stopped at Rudy's and got some gas and picked up some groceries. And then he went over here and did this, and then he went home, okay? That's called parenthetical enlargement, and that's what the Lord uses in his word sometimes. He'll say something, and then he'll extrapolate on it, okay? And now, this is just my own opinion. I think the Lord said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I think that's a statement that he did it, he created it. Okay, now some theologians, some pastors, they would agree or disagree with this. I think this may be at the time the devil came down because it says, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Okay, when the Lord creates something, he is light. The Bible says it several times in John and in 1 John, he is light and in him is no darkness. Okay, so right off the bat, if that's the case, if I'm right, the Lord created the devil's member. He's kicked out of heaven, okay? you got to have this time frame. He's down on earth. Um, even without being kicked out, he's down on earth going back and forth to heaven. Then it says, okay, the Lord, the earth was without form and full of void and full of darkness, and uh, darkness was upon the face of the deep. And then it says, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. So God creates, the devil comes in, tries to make darkness, and the God comes and fixes it. Now you can disagree with that, but later on we know that it shows all of God's creation, and then who's on the scene? Who's on the scene with Adam and Eve? The devil. And he's saying, this is what God said. And Eve says, no, this is what he said. And he goes, well, did he really say that? Okay, He wants to take God's word and what he said and either displace it or twist it into a lie. Okay, So right in the beginning, you got God, the devil, God, the devil. And all the while, people are being used in between to do those things. Okay, So how do we combat this? 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 5. Second Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is how we combat the enemy. We are not fighting a foe that is visible in the sense that he doesn't usually carry a visible weapon. We must remember that the enemy's weapons are ideas, that are contrary to God and his word. Remember, the enemy wasn't created with a pitchfork and a pointy tail. 
but comes as idea that looks good and feels good. Which usually works because the natural man is at enmity against God to begin with. And he does not want to have the word of God in his mind. So it doesn't take much convincing from the enemy. Paul, the apostle, was talking about an incident where somebody's accusing him of something. And I want to read that because he's got a statement at the end of that that talks about the enemy and what he looks like. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 9 through 15. And this verse is in the Amplified to understand it better. So if you could listen to it. Paul the Apostle says, And when I was with you and ran short financially, I did not burden any of you, for what I needed was fully supplied by the brothers Silas and Timothy, who came from Macedonia, the church at Philippi. So I kept myself from being a burden to you in any way, and will come and will continue to do so. As the truth of Christ is in me, my boast of independence will not be silenced in the regions of Achaia, southern Greece. Why? Because I do not love you, or wish you well, or have regard for your welfare, welfare, God knows that I do. But what I am doing, I will keep doing, for I am determined to keep this independence in order to cut off the claim of those that who want an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things that they brag about. For such men are counterfeit apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder since Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So it is no great surprise if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness, but their end will correspond with their deeds. As children of God, we are not without help. We have the Spirit of God and His Word. The enemy will try to exalt himself and us, above God and try to get rid of the knowledge of God. Having knowledge doesn't save you, but you must have the information or the knowledge first before you can call upon the name of the Lord. We must take every thought captive and be obedient. We must cast down the evil imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I don't know if everybody has in here because not everybody's been here, but the ones that have, I know that we've read Romans chapter 1 over and over. And you may recall in that chapter that all men have a knowledge that there is God. Okay? Every man. Now, men can claim to be atheists. They can have that title as being an atheist, but they know that there's a God. That's what Romans says. Because the Lord has clearly shown it. But when they know it, they will not glorify Him as God or be thankful to Him. But instead, they are led into an abyss of foolishness by their foolish heart, by their vain imaginations. And who do you think is there to, prov to provide them with vain imaginations. It is the one who is a deceiver and was a liar from the beginning. You guessed right, the devil. And in our opening passage in Revelation 12, 9, it says this, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. John, 1 John chapter 3, 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For his purpose, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why in Romans 1 it starts out and Paul the Apostle says that he is not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. 
It is the payment for your sin and the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to you if you believe and repent. In closing, I want to say that there is a real devil out there that wants to discredit the Lord and his people and rewrite the Lord's word or get rid of it completely. We need to be vigilant. We need to keep God's word. We need to keep praying. And we need to study that word every day. Because they're going to come with good-looking, sweet-sounding things. Okay? That's all. The enemy doesn't have a forked tail, does he? Yeah. He, he comes and he says, God's not going to send anybody to hell because he is love. Okay? And usually we hear that. They have something in their life that they want to keep or they want to do. Okay? Um, God is love. That is true. But God is love because He's a just God. All right? Um, You can't have love without justice. If God was not just, if He just let sin take place with no repercussions, that would not be love. Right? If me and Mike did the same thing, Mike gets away with it and I don't, is that love? It's not because it's not just. Ephesians chapter 6, 11 through 18. Ephesians 6, 11 through 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness in this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the devil, withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand there, having your loins girt about with truth, and having the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. So these powers are working. If we could see in the heavenlies, there's battles going on right now. If you could just see what's going on, they're warring against you and warring against me. So we need to keep that armor every day, okay? With truth, with the breastplate of righteousness, what's doing what's right in the Lord, believing His Word and following His Word. We're not saved by being on our own righteousness, but when we walk contrary to the Word of God and we're sinful and we're in blatant sin, the enemy will use that against us as a lever, okay? If you have something you want to lift and you, you grab down here, it can be heavy. But when you got a lever sticking out, a bar, and you push down on it, see, it's a lot easier. That enemy will use your blatant sin as a lever against you. You know, he'll come and say, well, you're just doing this, you're not saved, and so forth and so on. Don't let him have that lever against you. Keep your relationship with the Lord close, okay? And call upon Him for His help. Um, taking the shield of faith, okay? You've, you've got to, in order to have faith, you have to be saved this morning. First, you have to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ if you haven't. Because without it, you have the enemy working against you and you have no hope. Okay, but with faith, His payment, you're trusting in Christ. His payment for your sin, His righteousness is given to you, imputed to you, okay? That's your faith. That's where your hope stands. So when the devil comes to you, if you do fall, you do stumble, he says, well, you're not going to make it. And I just, you just say, devil, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ and his work, not my work, his work, okay? And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. 
We have to be in this Word of God, folks, every day. We have to know what's going on. We have to understand what's right and wrong. Um, people are going to come at you with all kinds of heretical things. Um, uh, things they'll say, you know, like I said, God is love. And if a man wants to be with a man, then the Lord understands that. Well, that's not the Lord's plan. And if we're not in the Word to understand what His plan is, how can we combat that idea? That idea that the devil has come down with, good-looking, smooth-talking ideas. We can get sucked into that trap. So we have to be reading that Word. If we don't believe we can get hit by the enemy, then we will not be vigilant with the Lord's armor and can be sidelined by the enemy. Since we know the enemy works, we can walk circumspectly every day with prayer and supplication. Let's pray this morning. Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Lord, for um, even when we walk amiss, Lord, or we misstep, Lord, you're there to help us. You're there to direct us, Lord. I just pray this morning that, Lord, every ear, Lord, will just take in, Lord, your goodness, Lord, and they would listen to you, Lord, as they go out throughout the week, that they would heed your word, Lord, that they've read, that they've listened to, Lord, that they would be obedient to you, and that you would uh, destroy the works of the enemy. That's what you came to do, Lord. And that there's anybody here that's not in your camp, Lord, they haven't accepted you, Lord. Lord, you're already working within their life, probably, Lord. All they got to do is cry out to you and have the faith, the faith that you've given them, Lord, to trust in you, to call upon you. Lord, it's your work, Lord. And we thank you for that this morning, Lord. Minister unto those that need it, Lord. Give them understanding and wisdom to defeat the enemy, Lord, because he comes as a shining light, Lord. He comes smooth talking, Lord. Don't let them be overtaken by that. But let them have your word and your righteousness upon them. We ask it in Jesus' name.